So our next question is, speaking of the side effects, how do the side effects of beam radiation and brachytherapy compare? Of course, the side effects of radi- any kind of radiation are partially dependent on the skill and the, <clears throat> the quality of the equipment that is being used. And uh, fortunately, in large population centers, most uh, places are pretty much up to speed in that regard. Uh, so, but if you just look at equal quality, high quality brachytherapy, high quality IMRT, proton therapy, uh, side effects tend to be similar. Uh, the issue, of course, is the urethra going through the middle of the prostate, so you can get irritation uh, with urination afterwards. In the past, we used to be concerned about rectal damage, and that's been pretty much solved with the injection of a gel called spacer between the rectum and the and the prostate. So the rectum doesn't get much radiation anymore with either approach. And uh, so I would say that the side effects are similar and so convenience is starting to become a differentiating factor. So if someone has to go to a facility daily for six, seven, eight weeks versus go for uh, an implant, which can be done in one day, or uh, perhaps have SBRT, where they give treatment every other day for five consecutive treatments. Sounds a lot more attractive. And uh, th- the side effects should be very similar with all these different methodologies. So what if we compared IMRT and SBRT and then PBRT c- together? Is it the same? Yes, yeah, so I would say as long as you're dealing with experienced doctors that are f- have the right equipment and have... Um, uh, you know, a good team, a good physicist, and um, good technicians, that the side effects, uh, I mean, the modern side effect problems with radiation are the development of erectile dysfunction. I mean, the, uh, the incidence of lingering urinary problems beyond six to eight weeks after treatment is completed is less than 5% now with well-performed uh, radiation. And the rectal issues, as I already mentioned, have been pretty much fixed. So it's Erectile dysfunction, that's the big concern, and uh, there's no evidence that the risk of erectile dysfunction from radiation has any difference between the different delivery methods, proton, IMRT, SBRT, brachytherapy. And uh, if you look at actual risks, the way we gauge that, let's say for a 60-year-old, someone who isn't already using Viagra or Cialis, um, the chances of erectile dysfunction when you radiate the whole prostate, as is typically done, uh, is probably about one in three. And the and we're talking about a type of rectal dysfunction that does not respond to Viagra or Cialis. So that's sometimes a little confusing. The rest of the world thinks if you need Viagra or Cialis, then you have erectile dysfunction. In the prostate cancer world, if you have uh, erectile dysfunction, uh, but it responds to Viagra or Cialis, that's not counted as erectile dysfunction. Uh, that's counted as your normal. And, uh, and yes, men do function nicely with these pills, but it's a little different uh, methodology for describing what erectile dysfunction really is. And uh, oftentimes comes up, well, what do you do then if the pills stop working? And it's, that's the seriousness of it. Men have to learn how to give themselves injections or ha- perhaps go for an implanted prosthesis. It's a big deal. And so um, whether you do brachytherapy, SBRT, proton therapy, the risk of erectile dysfunction is the same. So our next question is, is there any explanation for why proton beam radiation does not seem to produce better outcomes than other forms of radiation, despite the selling point that the radiation does not go past the tumor that it's targeting? Yeah, there's a few misunderstandings with proton therapy. One is, I think, due to marketing, uh, there's this implication that they're only treating the tumor and not the whole prostate, and that's just not correct. Uh, whenever radiation is administered to the prostate, they target the borders of the gland, and uh, then they give a homogeneous dose of radiation, whether it's proton therapy or IMRT, which is photon therapy, uh, to the whole gland. I, I agree with the conclusion of, uh, of this questioner that um, we're not seeing fewer side effects as is often billed as the, the special thing with proton therapy. Um, the side effects with other types of treatment, uh, IMRT and brachytherapy, are extremely low. So, as they are with proton therapy, uh, other than the concerns about erectile dysfunction, as we already mentioned. But uh, I think that it's hard to distinguish between a, um, you know, when you have really excellent low 
risk with all treatments, it's not surprising that we're not seeing much of a difference between proton therapy and IMRT. Our next question is in regards to beam radiation. So is there a preferred form of beam radiation for treating the lymph nodes or um, oligometastatic activity in the bones? And um, if so, which type will work better? The issues that come up when you're uh, thinking of treating anything is, is convenience. So SBRT, which is over a five to 10 day period is certainly more convenient. But there is some evidence that the more rapid administration of uh, radiation, which is SBRT, rather than over six, five, six, seven weeks with IMRT, uh, has greater anti-cancer efficacy. And uh, that is not a really proven fact, but there is some suggestion that if people are trying to cure bone metastasis, which is what's going on with oligometastatic disease, that they um, might be better served with SBRT. You mentioned IMRT for lymph nodes, and I th this is a rapidly evolving area. I think SBRT for lymph nodes, for convenience reasons, is attractive, but sometimes the lymph nodes are located near sensitive structures like the intestines, and the industry is more comfortable doing IMRT. IMRT's been out for um, you know, 10, 15 years or more now, and uh, of course, mistakes in the radiation world are punished severely if someone uh, some intestine is hit or a bladder gets hit with the radiation and burned, then uh, it's, it's just a terrible disaster. So, so IMRT or sometimes proton therapy, which as you pointed out has some special uh, physical characteristics, uh, it, are selected in lieu of SBRT. Uh, also, some centers aren't doing SBRT yet, so uh, doctors are just basically familiar with IMRT. So SBRT is new. There's a lot of advantages. It has um, possibly an increased cancer killing efficacy in, on bone metastasis. Uh, so all of these methods are reasonable to consider, but there are certain situations where SBRT might be better. We're gonna be talking, going back to IMRT and SBRT. Is there a reason for a patient to consider IMRT over SBRT considering the convenience of SBRT? And would that be, if, is one of the reasons unless microRNA testing would suggest IMRT? If the doctors that are giving the radiation aren't familiar with SBRT and don't have experience, I would definitely go with the uh, what they're used to doing. Uh, it's never fun to be in the doctor's early learning curves where mistakes are made. And uh, other than that, the um, you know some of the protocols for combining seed implants with IMRT. Uh, uh, you know, haven't been formalized yet for giving seed implants with SBRT. So that perhaps if a person is going to do a combination with seed implant plus beam radiation, there's more experience giving it with IMRT rather than SBRT. Uh, there are some early protocols that look good giving seed implants with SBRT. Uh, places it's Memorial Sloan Kettering or UCLA, but, um, but that's not been universally developed yet. Thanks for watching. If you would like more information, you can visit our website at pcri.org. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with new prostate cancer videos every week.